My name is Ofer Ramban and I teach constitutional law at the U of O and I'm here to provide some background on the constitutional issues involved, specifically the federal constitutional issues. First, as a preliminary matter, the federal constitution recognizes no obligation on the part of the government, be it the federal government or the state or the city, to provide for shelter for the homeless or even to designate certain lands specifically for the homeless to sleep in. That, uh, the operating principle here is that the federal constitution imposes no affirmative duties on the government. The federal constitution is in principle a protection against government powers, but again, it does not impose any affirmative duties on the government uh, uh, to provide uh, anything whatsoever. There are no social or economic rights under the federal constitution, no obligation to provide shelter, no obligation to provide education, not even obligation to provide food. Now, by the way, this is not the case with all constitutions. There are many constitutions around the world that do provide for social and economic rights. In fact, there are about a dozen states that provide for social and economic rights in their constitution. New York, for example, imposes an obligation on the, through its, const on its constitution, imposes an obligation on the government to, uh, to, to care for the poor. New Jersey uh, residents have a constitutional right for some form of public education, etc. But again, this is not the case under the federal constitution. And uh, even Roosevelt's second Bill of Rights, that uh, his famous uh, uh, call for some social and economic rights, was uh, given in his 1944 State of the Union address. Even that call pertained to statutory rights and not to constitutional rights under the federal constitution. Now, there are various reasons as to why the federal constitution does not, does not uh, provide for any social and economic rights. We can discuss those uh, uh, during the questions and answer uh, period. But the short of the matter is that Eugene has no obligation under the federal constitution uh, to provide for some form of shelter. Now, it is, as was noted earlier, it is a different matter altogether as to whether Eugene can penalize homelessness. So, the city can certainly forbid homeless individuals from sleeping in certain places and at certain times, but it cannot forbid homeless individuals from sleeping in all places at all times. A number of courts held that if such bans are actually enforced, again, it is not enough that you have such ban on your books. If it is shown that such bans, citywide bans, are actually enforced at all times and at all places, that would be a violation of the Eighth Amendment prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment. And again, the idea is simple. Um, if a person has no money for shelter, there is nothing that that person can immediately do but uh, to sleep at some uh, uh, public place and therefore to violate the law. Courts refer to such <coughs> violations as involuntary violations of the criminal law. And again, this was declared by a number of courts, including the Ninth Circuit, in a decision that was mentioned as a violation of the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution. But again, there is a very high demand of showing for such finding of constitutional violations. The plaintiffs must show first that there were no beds in any shelter that are available, but also that the, the city, in fact, enforces this prohibition uh, at all places and at all times, so that the plaintiffs have no, have no choice, if you will, but to violate the law. Two years ago, by the way, such a claim was dismissed against the city of Portland, that there's also a city-wide uh, uh, um, ban on sleeping and camping, because there was such insufficient showing. The consequences, by the way, of finding such a constitutional violation are rather modest. That is, there is a dismissal of criminal citations given to homeless individuals under such circumstances, and some courts may issue injunctions that forbid the city from enforcing its uh, a, a ban on, on public sleeping at certain times and at certain places. Um, okay, now let's move to the discussion of the constitutional provision that was actually involved in the litigation in the case, and that is not the Eighth Amendment, but the First Amendment. So in August, the municipal court dismissed charges against 21 protesters for violating the closure of the Wayne Morse Plaza between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. 
The court held that enforcing this closure against these protesters was a violation of these individuals' free speech rights, that this was a violation of the First Amendment in the United States Constitution. Now, First Amendment doctrine recognizes that cities, governments in general, may constitutionally regulate the time, place, and manner of expression, including of protests. Such regulations are, again, in principle, constitutional regulations of the time, the place, and the manner of protests are constitutional if, first, they are not aimed at suppressing expression, that is, the government may not suppress a certain message under the pretext that all it does is regulate the time, the place, and the manner of the expression. Second, such regulations must leave open alternative means of communication for this expression. So again, to be constitutional, the regulation, the regulation of time, place, or manner of, uh, of uh, protests must leave open alternative means of conveying that message. And third, that, or that regulation must further a significant state interest. Now, the court order in this case was short and did not really contain any detailed constitutional analysis, but the court did not find that the closure was aimed at suppressing the message. Uh, it, was, it did not find that the closure of the Wentworth Plaza was in fact aimed at, uh, at silencing these protesters. And obviously, the court did not find that there were no other open alternative channels of expression for the protests, if only because these protesters could continue their protests between the hours of, uh, of uh, 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. The court apparently determined that there was no significant government interest involved. Now, let me just say, as an aside, that this is a highly unusual determination. The city claimed that the cleanliness of the plaza and keeping the plaza in an aesthetically pleasing and orderly state uh, was the reason for the closure. And there was indeed some uh, minor evidence of, uh, of some evidence of minor vandalism and soiling of the plaza. Uh, but the United States Supreme Court repeatedly upheld the constitutionality of time, place, and manner regulations that were based on, again, similar reasons, trying to protect the aesthetic uh, attractiveness or what have you of a certain location. Uh, uh, such regulations regularly pass master in, uh, in federal courts and under the decisions, precedents of the United States Supreme Court. Let me just mention one more case from last year. Uh, uh, the Oregon Court of Appeals decision upheld or Portland's closure of the capital steps between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. for essentially similar reasons. And the court did so under the Oregon Constitution that in fact, in principle, provides more free speech protections than the federal constitution does. I will stop here. Thank you.